everybody. It's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we have a phenomenal guest, the award-winning writer, director of the documentary, Leaving God. His name, Mr. John Folis. He is the award winner of a Hollywood international documentary film called Leaving God, where he shares how people over the years increased of people leaving God. His film explores a major cultural shift happening in America, away from religion and from God. Paralleling this trend is also Mr. Folis shares his fascinating personal story. BBC describes this as a compelling film and has been seen by over 36,000 people from 98 countries via Venmo, YouTube, and the top documentaryfilms.com website. Before becoming a filmmaker, John was uh, also an award-winning Madison Avenue admin who actually helped sell God. Great to have you, sir. Great to have you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself for my audience so they can hear it from, from the man himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that buildup, Marcus. I appreciate it. So I spent my career in the advertising industry, started my career working for some of the top agencies in New York, and uh, decided to switch gears and do more independent projects. And uh, after doing that for a couple of years, I attracted a business guy who was excellent at business development. So he was uh, someone that really allowed me and us together to find our own clients and try to build an agency, which we ended up doing. And because he was so good at what he did, finding business, and I was good at doing the creative work, our agency in a very short time grew very quickly, uh, not just with new clients, but clients that allowed us to do the uh, highly creative kind of edgy kind of advertising work that got seen and noticed. So these awards that you see behind me are some of the awards that were won for the clients that we served during that time. And uh, I think it was about three years after we started our agency, we became the second most award-winning agency in New York. I think we had, at the time we had six employees so we were beating out agencies that had worldwide networks of thousands and thousands of people in the award show. So it was pretty, that was pretty exciting. That is very exciting. That's huge. How did you transition over to filmmaking? Pretty soon after websites came on the scene, then it became a, a question of, are you taking advantage of digital video to tell your story of your product or service on your website? So I got involved with video in the late 90s. So I had always fantasized about making a documentary. I, I'm a big fan of Michael Moore's work and uh, Ken Burns and some of the other great documentary filmmakers, but I never really thought I had anything worth making a documentary about until around 2016 when I started doing some research about a topic that I had always been interested in. And that is um, people who had changed their attitude about religion and God. But what really kind of was the tipping point for me to make my documentary was, was when I discovered that more and more priests and ministers were, quote, coming out as non-believers. So that, to me, I thought was a story worthy of considering making a documentary on. And for, for me, that was the first step toward making that. And I very quickly realized once I got into it uh, and started crafting this documentary, uh, just through, again, I'm not really a filmmaker, but I, I know how to write. I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a writer. And as you know, it's really not that hard to learn the editing aspect if you like it. And I ended up with a 47-minute film called Leaving God. A powerful film that really stood out. Again, you, you were awarded for this film. And again, 40,000 views and growing. And that's, that's no easy task. 
right? That's 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 like an achievement to to shine a light. And again, uh, what I think some people have even attested that this film, their expectation was, um, is this gonna convert me out of religion? And it's actually not, right? It's not that type of film. It's not a exactly. to to slant you in either direction. Yeah. It's to just share information. I I approached it like an investigative reporter and then weaved my personal story into it as well. So it's really nothing that you can debate because I'm just, the sources that I used were Pew Research, which was one of the, the most respected research companies in the world that showed the statistics about people uh, leaving church and religion and especially the millennials now, something like 38% of millennials no longer believe in God. It's not my, my opinion or my bias. But uh, this isn't anything that was on Netflix or HBO or PBS. And if you make a film, uh, no matter how good it is or how interesting the subject is, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you can't get people to watch it. So I was shocked when about uh, four or five months after I posted it on Vimeo, when uh, all of a sudden over the weekend uh, views double to like 10,000 views. Vimeo allows you to look at the analytics so you can find out where all the views are coming from. So when that happened, I found out that all the views were coming from a website that I had never heard of called topdocumentaryfilms.com. So of course I clicked on that link and there on their main page, was an image of my movie poster with a link to watch it and a really positive critical review of the film. So I was blown away. I had no idea how they found out the film. They didn't even ask me permission, which was fine. I didn't care. I was thrilled that they, yeah, <laughs> they just posted it. But the fact that someone there in a decision-making capacity a stumbled on the film, B watched the film, and C liked the film. That's why they decided to post it. And it was specifically because they did that I started getting suddenly thousands and thousands of views from around the world. You could also find out where the views are coming from. And I actually counted that the views came from 98 different countries, which was really pretty cool. Very cool. That's incredible. That's huge. That is no easy task. And how long did it take you to make the film um, beginning to end? Well, it, it took me about three or four months, which is nothing. But you have to understand, I made that film sitting from this chair. Wow. I didn't have a production team. And um, I took my time, but I worked 24 seven during those, those three months. Once I got into a rhythm, I just, I was obsessed. It was, I was so excited because I could see it coming together. I was just obsessed by my making, and I'm a perfectionist. The reason I, the reason I won these awards is because uh, I was a perfectionist about the work that I, I, I did in advertising. And I took that same mindset to making this documentary that's incredible. That's incredible. And that's that's huge because when you all see this film, it, it again, it's not it's not to sway you in any particular direction, but it's very, very well. Done. And that perfectionism comes out in the film. I, I'll tell you right now, when I watched it, I couldn't turn it down. I mean, people were talking to me. People I mean, phone calls were ringing off the hook. If I had a baby, that baby be in trouble because <laughs> I was so interested from beginning to end. It truly is. It it just grabs you and it never lets you go and it never lets you off the roller coaster until that, that, that climactic end, um, which is the unanswered question that he leaves you with. So you guys got to check this film out. It is absolutely just, again, informational. I'm, I'm really pleased to hear your reaction to it, that it really kept your intention because that was, that was what I was hoping to do uh, with it. It didn't really matter what I said if I couldn't, keep people's attention throughout the film. So I wanted it to be paced in a way where um, I wouldn't allow people to get bored, you know? Never, never. Before you, you took on this project, you had an opportunity um, to sell God. 
Um, and can you tell us, can you share any of that with us of on, on, on what that was like? Um, before I, I decided to detach from my belief in God and my involvement with the church, I was, I was very active, was involved with the church for about 15 years before I got on the radar of the head minister who um, was interested in talking to me when he found out that I was running my own award-winning Madison Avenue agency because his board of directors had just approved a marketing budget of 150K to do some marketing and advertising for the church. And he was very interested at that point in meeting with me and talking with me about the idea of helping the church with, uh, with their marketing and advertising. And um, with any client or prospective client, I should say, that um, our agency would be introduced to, we didn't necessarily jump at working with them just because they had money to spend on advertising. We had a very uh, defined brand for our ad agency that we wanted to maintain. We did great creative work. We did edgy creative work. And we only wanted to work with clients that, A, understood that brand and valued that brand of doing edgy, attention-getting work. So just the way that minister was interviewing me, I was also kind of interviewing him to decide whether or not I thought this would be a compatible collaboration. And he didn't know that I knew that he was talking to other people. And when he said, so are you interested? My reply was, and I have to laugh now when I think back on it, my reply to him was, uh, let me ask you, are you working aren't you working, uh, talking to another person? And I actually knew who this other person wa was and they were not that good. Wow. So, uh, because this, this was a woman who had actually, um, just a few months prior had come to my, my agency looking for work as a copywriter. And I didn't think her work was that good. So it was kind <laughs> of a unique perspective I had. And when I knew that uh, he was talking to her as well, my response was, well, if you're talking to someone else, why don't you hire them? And if it doesn't work out, then you can come back to me. <laughs> what? what? It's like, shoo, go, go, go work with her and find out. I, then... You know, I, I think back on it, Marcus. And again, I, I have to laugh because it was, it was a pretty outrageous thing for me to say. And again, it might have been because I was a little bit ticked off at an experience I had with him uh, years ago. But I think also as I, as I kind of analyzed it, I wanted to kind of test his um, enthusiasm because I just spent 30 minutes with him sh sharing all our agency's work and he got to see all the awards that were hanging on our wall. If he thought that that wasn't enough, if that wasn't enough to convince him that we were the agency to work with, then he could go ahead and work with someone else. That was the attitude kind of that I had. And his reaction was like, I kicked him in the nuts. It, we, I mean, he just, he just looked at me and, and he couldn't believe what I said. And he said, no, I want you to give us a proposal. So I told strange. him, I said, I, at that point, I said, let me, let me think about it. I'll get back to you in a couple of days. <laughs> I just wanted him to respect that we were a top agency and we didn't need his business. Mm. Now, the, the subtext of that is that I was thrilled at the possibility of working for this church because I was passionate about this church. I loved this church. Uh, I, I was involved with it, at, like I said, for 15 years. And I was just, I felt so fortunate that I had a place like this that I could go every week and I had so many friends there. And I went on many weekend retreats and, and I was really tightly bonded to, uh, to this church in many ways. And the idea of, having the opportunity to, to do an ad campaign for this church was thrilling to me. I told him I'd think about it. And of course, a couple of days later, I said, sure, I'd be happy to give him a proposal. And beyond just a proposal, you know, when someone says they want a proposal, usually it's a marketing proposal or a media proposal, which is how, how that money would be spent. That would make it the most effective. But I knew that if I really wanted to win the assignment, 
it would help if I showed him some creative work, even though he didn't specifically ask for that. And quite honestly, Marcus, I, I couldn't stop myself from thinking creatively because I knew the church so well. And I, I just the ideas were just sparking all over the place. And, and the ideas were just like these one liners, you know, these just one liners that would be on a poster that would get attention uh, that reflected what the church was about and then would have the information about you know, their services on Sunday or their phone number, their, their uh, website address. So their, their coffee connection. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of the headlines was they, they had a great coffee hour. Um, and uh, one of the things I would look forward to every weekend was the coffee hour. Sometimes I would just skip the sermon. I'd go directly to the coffee hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, because for me, it wasn't so much the sermons and the biblical stuff. It was the, the fellowship and the connections of my friends that would all be at the coffee hour. So one of the headlines I had was, our coffee hour is happier than most happy hours. <laughs> Marketing genius. I mean, it was just a simple thought, but it's not only what you say, it's how you say it. You know, when you're talking to jaded New Yorkers, I can tell you uh, as, as someone who lived there for years, you can think of a lot, lot of things you'd rather be doing on a Sunday morning than going to church. Right. So uh, you have to uh, be a little bit playful you have to be a little bit irreverent if you want to get in uh, the minds of a, of a 20 or 30 something New Yorker. Another headline was, uh, you don't have to be a sinner to attend our church, but it helps. Because imagine being a 23 year old guy who was just doing whatever on Saturday night, right? Amen. And all of a sudden, um, you got to put up something on a post that is going to get him to think about going to church on Sunday. Not an easy, not an easy task. Not at all. So if you can put a smile on his face and, and talk to him in a way that he, he can appreciate, you don't have to be a sinner to attend our church, but it helps. Basically saying, we don't care what you did on Saturday night. We'd still love to have you on Sunday. I, I think that's something that you can say, okay, this, this is a cool church. That's essentially the reaction that I wanted to get uh, from the audience. And, and listen, the minister told us that was that was the directive that he gave us, Marcus. He said, listen, we specifically want to target younger people because we know that's the future of our church. If we want to continue to go to this church, we've got it. And it's we don't see a lot right now. We don't see a lot of younger people in the pews at our church. So if you can do something that's going to get younger people to consider coming to church, uh, that would be great. The most successful, I'll just mention one more, Marcus, because this was the most successful one. One of the things I loved about this church is the many groups and activities and programs that, that they had. I, I, I don't know that there's any church in New York that had as many interesting programs and activities. If you were um, an entrepreneur, they had an entrepreneur's group. If you were divorced, they had a divorce recovery group. If you were gay or lesbian, and I'm talking the 90s, Marcus, the Even late then. 90s, they had a, a, a LBGT group back then. They were really ahead of their time. So they had about two dozen groups and activities. So you may not want to be going, be that interested in, in the biblical stuff, but maybe you just went through a divorce and you're looking for some comfort or some support. Uh, I thought it was important to showcase the fact that our church uh, isn't just about scripture. It's about many other things that can serve your needs. So because these posters were big, I wanted to list all these groups. And the headline I came up for that was, if you're looking to feed your soul, we've got a great menu. Mm. And then I listed in three columns, all the groups and activities. So if you're sitting on it, you know, that's not going to work on an out, out, outdoor billboard, maybe. But if you're sitting on a subway for, for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, you have an opportunity to look up and really scrutinize a list of groups and activities and maybe find one that would make it worth your while to check out. Yeah. You know, I wanted to, to, to attract people uh, to the church any way possible. And whenever you're selling any kind of a product or service, you look at what are those product benefits? And uh, again, a Subway poster was the perfect media buy to showcase that because you have a, a, a captured, literally a, a, a captured 
uh, audience sitting on a subway for 10 or 15 minutes uh, that can really respond to a list. Incredible, incredible. Again, you all, if, if you're watching this right now, you have to check out this film. It is, again, it, 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 it grabs you, it takes you 3,000 feet, it drops you a little bit, and then it brings you back up again. And it's just all through and through. You asked a very important question at the end. Is, did you ever get your answer to that question? What you're talking about, I think, is kind of the climax of the film, because after I, I take the viewer through this whole roller coaster of events uh, that I experienced in my life uh, doing this church campaign and then some things that followed up that I, I found myself reflecting on all these experiences and really um, asking myself a lot of question, a question that I think many people these days are asking themselves is, um, did God make us or did man create God? Mm. You know, that's really the question that I was asking, because I was taught that God made us. But after going through a lot of experiences and doing the research that it did, you know, throughout all my 40 years of my life, I began to uh, make the comparison to the Wizard of Oz. There's a scene at the end of the movie where Dorothy and her cohorts are returning to the great and powerful Oz after killing the wicked witch Wait. of the West, thinking that they had accomplished the task that the wizard had given them. Dorothy so the whole thing was she wanted to go back home. Go back home. He said, yeah, go ahead and kill the wicked witch. And then we'll, we'll talk about getting you back to, to, uh, to Kansas. So in that scene, he was not expecting her to come back with the broomstick of the of the dead witch, and then kind of um, backstepped a little bit and said that he still wasn't able to get her back to Kansas. He kind of reneged on that promise. And that's when Toto wanders over to the side and pulls back the curtain and sees that this great and powerful Oz was nothing more than an old white guy pulling some levers. It turned out to be uh, totally bogus that there, was, there really wasn't, contrary to what they had believed all this time, there really wasn't any great and powerful Oz. Um, and she ultimately realized that she had the power all along to get back home, to, to achieve her, 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 her heart's desire. She did not have to rely on the quote, great and powerful Oz. And the question I asked is, um, Maybe when it comes to, to God, maybe the same is true for me and everyone. That, that was the question. Is there an analogy there for me, for my life, and maybe for all of us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I didn't mean, answer that. I don't claim to have all the answers. I, I, the only thing I claim, uh, Marcus, is to have the questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. How can we watch the film? How can people find you and your great work? I think if you just type in the words leaving God in Google, at least when I did it, it came up. Um, it might help if you put the word film or documentary after that. Thank you, Mr. Follis. This episode has been truly epic. And this, I appreciate you for taking the time to speak with me and share with my audience today on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I want to say it's a true honor to have you here. And thank you again so much, sir, for your great work and sharing your information. Well, it's been a thrill, Marcus. I really appreciate you having me and I appreciate the very positive words you shared about the film. I do appreciate that. Glad you enjoyed it. Absolutely, absolutely. And I wanna thank you all, my audience, for tuning into the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this this inspires and I hope this is informational and it, it, it shows you a wider array of, of, of viewpoints and vantage points and perspective. And like I always end every show, Take care of your families. I hope this helps. Take care of your family. Take care of your friends. And always, always take care of business. This is Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show signing off. Love you guys. Love you.